Today on Judge Faith, Atlanta college students come to court to collect on their roommate's overdue rent. She talks about getting her hair done and she found somebody that would do it for $150. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, wait, you still owe me $150. I wasn't the only one being irresponsible. Listen, you're all struggling. You're all college students. No one has any money. I've been there. I've done that. I've lived through it. But at the same time, you have responsibilities and obligations. And later, a Minneapolis mom claims a used car she bought from an online ad turned out to be a lemon. Not even 48 hours after I purchased the vehicle, the transmission goes out. Her mechanic told us that the engine and the, the transmission are solid. Listen, if you sell cars on Craigslist and you flip cars, that's fine. In your mind, you may be a car dealer, but it sounds like you just flip cars. Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiffs Brian Stills and Courtney Foster say their former roommate was always late on rent forcing them to break their lease early. They're suing for unpaid rent, utilities, and loss of deposit. Defendant Lataris Butler says she owes nothing because her roommates were aware of her financial situation and she didn't want to terminate the lease early. All rise, court is in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Please be seated. Your Honor, the litigants have been sworn in. This is the case of Stills and Foster versus Butler. Thank you, Juan. Brian Stills? Yes, Your Honor. And Courtney Foster? Yes. You are suing the defendant, help me with your name, Latyrus? Latyrus Butler, yes. Latyrus Butler for $1,577. You say she owes you as a part of a roommate agreement for unpaid rent, utilities, and loss of deposit? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Seals, why don't I start with you? Okay. Tell me how you met Ms. Butler and how the three of you decided to move into an apartment together. Um, basically, I knew Courtney from school. We both went to Georgia State. Uh, Ty was Courtney's roommate at the time. We decided to go to spring break together, Panama City, and Courtney was looking for an apartment. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, me and Ty were roommates before. Okay. Um, we did stay in student housing. We had separate leases there, though. In May, we started looking for apartments, and the price of living in Atlanta is kind of expensive in the inner city. Mm -hmm. So we decided to bring Brian in as a good, you know, we knew he was And get a three-bedroom apartment. Right. How much was the rent in the three-bedroom apartment? It was $1,099. $1,000 for a three-bedroom apartment? Right. Mm-hmm. Wow, at that rate, I could afford to live in a mansion like Juan. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty right. good. It was pretty cheap. And the security deposit was how much? $300. $300. And so the agreement was you would split it three ways. Yes, ma'am. And you said that this is what you wrote in your complaint about spring break, okay. about Miss Butler. You said she was wild and slightly irresponsible, but I didn't think much of it because it was spring break. Correct. So what does slightly irresponsible mean to you? Um, I saw her get drunk. I saw her throw up multiple times. So basically, I saw a lot of uh, different Would sides Would you deem of her. this as slightly irresponsible, <laughs> still okay to room with and get an apartment with, right? Uh, correct. Okay, so here we are. What month and year do you sign the lease? Uh, we signed the lease in July of 2015. And the agreement is you would split the... H how was spring break, by the way? It was great. It, you, it was fine. Yeah. You survived? <laughs> you survived? Okay, so... From what, from what you remember, it was great. It was fine. Okay. Everyone had fun. I mean, I wasn't the only one being irresponsible. I mean, Slightly irresponsible. Yes, yeah, slightly irresponsible, yes. So getting beyond spring break, we're now July 2015. You guys get a great deal on a 12-month lease, but you don't last very long in this lease. Yes, ma'am. What happens? We paid our deposit, and the leasing office said, hey, we know you paid your deposit, but so we don't have to prorate you guys you know, could you go ahead and pay August? Mm -hmm. So seeing that I was able to pay August and they were not, I decided to, hey guys, I'll go ahead and pay August. So you covered August for everyone? Yes. And did you pay him back? Yes, ma'am. Did yes, you pay him back? Yes, ma'am, I did. It okay. took a while, but yes, ma'am. Okay, so what, what months do you say she missed? Why are you suing her for um, three months of rent? Well, the three months comes down to November, December, and January. Okay. Um, but before then, I guess October, mm -hmm. um, and this is where, you know, she still owes me money from the 
August when I paid for everybody's rent. Okay, so she had not paid you, you hadn't paid August at that point? I didn't pay him back fully, but later on that month, yes ma'am, I did. Okay. And she, um, so we're all sitting down talking and she talks about getting her hair done and she found somebody that would do it for 150. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, wait, you still owe me 150, so that's messed up. That so you did she get, get her hair done, done with the 150 or did she no, pay you? No, ma'am, I gave um, it to him. No, I'm asking him a question. Why do you keep talking out of turn? Because I feel like it's not fair well, and I, I'm I, upset about it. You will get it. your opportunity to speak. I promise you, you will. Yes, ma'am. Coming up, the roommates reveal a questionable contract in court. You signed an agreement to pay these three months. So you, you're agreeing to this. You don't have to do that. You I don't didn't have to read sign it, the agreement. Honestly. What? I didn't read it, which wasn't smart. Well, that's not their problem. And later, a dispute over a used car that turned out to be undrivable. The mechanic said that there's errors internally with the transmission and that it needs to be replaced. Bad transmission. Correct. Plaintiffs Brian Stills and Courtney Foster say their former roommates' irresponsible behavior forced them to break their lease early. They're suing for unpaid rent, utilities, and loss of deposit. Defendant Lataris Butler says she owes nothing because she always, eventually, paid her rent. Take me to what happens at the end of October. Um, well, we have another talk at the end of October. Apparently, her hours were getting cut at her job. So we were like, well, how about we all just go ahead and move back home since we can't pay your part every month for, like, 10 more months. So she decides to but agree But you'd only paid us. her portion for one month at this point, and that was August, right? right? That's Brian correct, but we part. also um, had issues of money, like, for utilities and stuff. The there was also an issue with utilities. So were you struggling during this time period? Yes, ma'am, and they knew that prior to this. They knew I was struggling. They knew, okay, she doesn't make a lot. I worked fast food. So I didn't make very much. I made seven seventy-five an hour. So what decision do you come to about the about the lease? You decide to break the lease, right? right? Each of you will pay for one month of rent to get out of the lease, and you'll all go your separate ways and live somewhere else. Right. right. They decided Did you have without a discussion? Them. We actually agreed to this. Ty agreed as well as us to go ahead and put in the agreement. She she also wait, you signed paper. an agreement? She, you signed this agreement? She did. They told me that if I didn't sign the agreement, we'd have to pay an extra month, which, of, co of course, well, I didn't have. agreement. Well, this was, at this point, though, you signed an agreement to pay these three months. So you, you're agreeing to this. You don't have to do that. You I don't didn't have to read sign it, the agreement. Honestly. What? I didn't read it, which wasn't smart. Well, that's not their problem. And you're old enough to know if you put your signature on a document, you need to know what it says. So I don't accept that excuse. That's like saying the dog ate my homework. It's not acceptable in this courtroom. Yes, ma'am, I understand. I see two yeah. signatures on here. I didn't here. sign. Um, okay, so you didn't sign it. Correct. Okay. But the um, two of you sign it. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Although I didn't sign, I went to go talk to the uh, leasing management. Mm -hmm. And basically, they said, since you put it in now, you have two months. So you have... November and December, mm -hmm. and you have to pay for January. Right. Which so you stayed there November and December. Correct. Right. So the only we month did. that you did not live there was January. Correct. Okay, so you lived there November and December. No, ma'am. No. Where did you go? In November. Honestly, I was barely there because I was living pretty much living with my friend because he would help me. I was still like having all my stuff there, and I was still so you were paying on bills so, and everything. Okay. But it's just I didn't have enough, I wasn't making enough, as they knew I was struggling. Listen, you're all struggling. You're all college students. No one has any money. I've been there. I've done that. I've lived through it. Right. Okay? You're all struggling. I get it. But at the same time, you have responsibilities and obligations. You, and under the law, you're still a part of this lease. You signed this agreement that you would vacate at the end of December. Your stuff's still there anyway, so by law, technically, you're still there, even if you're not spending the night there. So under these circumstances, you have to pay your portion of the rent for those three months. You know, you don't get to live anywhere for free. It happens. We all have struggles. We all go through it when we're in college, but this is what you owe. They decided to bring the lawsuit. I have to enforce the law. $1,577, verdict for the plaintiffs. I really wish we could still be friends, but you have to separate business from personal. I feel like it was really messed up the way things went because I did think that they were my best friends because that's how they acted, but I don't want anything else to do with them. Plaintiff Carissa Olson says a defendant sold her a used car with a bad transmission and then promised to compensate her for it. She's suing for a payment refund for a car. She's accompanied in court today by Dustin Wilbur. Defendant Wiseya Way says he doesn't owe any money because Carissa signed a no warranty contract. Carissa Olson, 
Yes, Your Honor. You are suing the defendant, Wazea Way. Yes, Your Honor. For $2,700, you want to be refunded for a car you purchased from him? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so why don't you tell me what happened? When did you purchase the car? I purchased the vehicle on April 13th, 2016. What kind of car is it? It's a Ford Freestyle 2006. Okay, and so did you find an ad on Craigslist? Or, or... I did find an ad on Craigslist. Um, from Do you a... have a copy of it? I don't have a copy of it, no, Your Honor. It just said a 2006 Ford Freestyle, um, willing to sell for 3500 mm -hmm. And I was very interested in seeing this vehicle. So I contacted the defendant April 10th. Okay, and why were you selling the car, sir? Was this your car that you were driving? I'm a car dealer. Okay, you have your own car dealership? That's correct, Your Honor. It's located in Ramsey, Minnesota. And, and where'd you meet him to look at the car? Target parking lot. Why would she go to the Target parking lot to meet you if you have a car dealership? Your Honor, uh, my car dealership is, is really far away from where I live. It's in Brooklyn Park. Mm -hmm. It's a very small dealership. It's, you know, we parked about five cars there. And uh, what I do, I have a, a big house and uh, I can park like 12 cars. Sir, yeah. listen, if you sell cars on yeah. Craigslist and you flip cars, yeah. that's fine. But don't call yourself a car dealer if you're not, because the laws are very different. That's why I'm asking you these factual questions. In your mind, you may be a car dealer, but it sounds like you just flip cars. Well, I am a dealer because I have are a dealer. You, you have a license? Yes. Okay, so you are, you are a licensed dealer. You sell cars. Yes, Your Honor. And your primary source for advertising is Craigslist. Yes, Your Honor. Did you know he was a car dealer? No, not at the time, Your Honor. During this entire transaction, did you think you were buying a car from, from an individual or a dealer? Individual. Okay, so you meet him at the Target parking lot and what happened? Basically, everything seemed fine. I mean, it had about 135,000 miles on it, so I was assuming, I mean, there was wear and tear with a used vehicle. So I contacted him that evening and I said I was very interested in purchasing the vehicle prior, but before I do, I really want to um, get a diagnostic for it. Okay, great. Most people don't, so you decide to take it to a mechanic. Yep. What's, I paid... the, what's the asking price for the car? The asking price was 3500 How much did you end up paying for it? 2700 2700 So the next day you go, you take it to a mechanic to get it checked out, mm -hmm. and were you happy with the results? I was happy with the results. So the mechanic told you it was good to go? Yep. Okay, and so you buy the car for $2,700. Why are we here? What happened? Not even 48 hours after I purchased the vehicle, the transmission goes out. The gears start shifting on me while I'm transporting my children from school back home. And it just basically, I was pushing the gas and it was acting as though it was in neutral. So the mm -hmm. gears weren't properly working at the time. So I took it back to the place that I got the oil change at because right after I purchased the vehicle, I, I got maintenance on it. I got an oil change and alignment. And um, so I just took it back there because they said, oh, it's safe to go, it's safe to drive. Mm -hmm. I was planning on taking it out of state, so I, I mean, I wanted to make sure that this was gonna be a reliable car. What happened was that it wasn't reliable. They what did said, the mechanic tell you? The mechanic said that the, there's errors um, internally with the transmission and that it needs to be replaced. Bad transmission. Correct. Did you sign a written agreement to buy this car? Yes, ma'am. Okay, may I see a copy of it? Yes, ma'am. Did he tell you anything at all about the transmission, ma'am, when you purchased the car? No, ma'am. He okay. said that there was, he had no knowledge of any, um, the signature of his is on the back of that title, just the transaction of um, the release of the title. Well, I, I know, but was there a, was there anything, you don't have the Craigslist ask, you had anything else about the agreement when you purchase the car? This is the as is no warranty that okay. I retrieved because once I told, well, once I told him that I, um, about the transmission, I let him know right after I found out from the mechanic and that he said that he's very sorry that happened to me and that he's going to be looking for a transmission for me. When did you sign this as is? No I did warranty. not sign it. Well, so there's a signature on here. Whose signature is it? This is your copy, right? Yes, ma'am but there was no signature on it, and that was the first time that I've seen that. Well, there is a signature on it. You don't see the signature at the bottom? This is a copy, but there is a signature where it says customer signature at the bottom. No, I didn't. Do you have the original? Yes, Your may Honor. I, may I see the original, please? And th this was in your paperwork? This was in my paperwork. Coming up on Judge Faith, will the witness reveal that information was withheld about the condition of the used car? Everything seemed okay, but I felt like there was something wrong or something fishy about the car. Plaintiff Carissa Olson says she bought the car under false knowledge. She's suing for a payment refund of a car. 
defendant Wisea Way says he doesn't owe any money because the used car was sold as is. You say you've never seen this document before? No, but I didn't, I, not to my knowledge, no. But I remember, I mean, I signed multiple papers as well when we were transferring the title. You signed multiple papers? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, this is the original. And yeah, there's a signature at the bottom. Y you're saying you didn't sign this? And it's here, it's on this document, it's just light because it's a copy. Oh, this is, this is my signature, yes ma'am. Okay. So you signed that you would purchase this car as is, no warranty. What do you have to say? Were you aware that there were any issues with the transmission? No, Your Honor. But when she requested that we take the transmission to her shop, we took the vehicle over there, and her mechanics told us that the engine and the, the transmission are solid. I also They're solid? Yes, yeah, solid. It okay. is good. Uh, I should have the, the report, the inspection report from the, the mechanic that did an uh, inspection. May I see it? Yes. The part that you want to show me? It's a uh, transmission type auto, okay. And this is the report that you received a copy of as well? Yes, Your Honor. And this is a mechanic that you chose, right? This is a mechanic that was referred to me by a person that used to work for the shop as well. But, but not, it, from not, him, not from not him, not from no. anyone he knows. No, so Honor. this is a completely independent mechanic that looked at the car? This is a completely um, independent shop. It's called Affordable Auto um, right, Service. Right, but he has no association with the defendant? No, Your Honor. Okay. Okay, what do you have to say, sir? Who are you? Hi, I'm Dustin Wilbur, Crystal's boyfriend. Okay. I was there from the day one, from the get-go. I test drive it when we first got it. Everything seemed okay, but I felt like there was something wrong or something fishy about the car. When uh, we talked to him later on that day, uh, he was very willing to go down on the price. I just thought that was really odd. Coming up, Judge Faith rules. And now, Judge Faith rules. Here's the issue, because these used car sales uh, can be tricky. Private sales, as is, unless, unless the private person makes a specific warranty, it is by default as is, even if you don't sign something. But here we're dealing with the dealer. Uh, in your state, as a dealer, there are specific warranties that come with certain cars unless you actually sign a form that says it's an as-is sale, which you did in this case. Even if you didn't sign as is, the Lemon Law doesn't apply to your car because it has too many miles on it and it's too old. The Lemon Law actually stops applying when you get to a certain number of miles uh, in your state. And this, uh, with over 130,000 miles, it completely surpassed the mileage limit that applies in your state. So the only way you can get your money back on this is if you can prove to me that the defendant committed some kind of fraud. And when you have in front of me a report from a mechanic that he has absolutely nothing to do with, didn't refer you to, doesn't know, that said the transmission was good, you can't prove to me that he intentionally tried to defraud you when a mechanic looked at the car and said that the car was okay. And the reason why the laws are set up the way they are is because courts don't want to have to relitigate used car sales. A car with 130,000 miles and it's 10 years old, it's bound to have a ton of problems. You did the right thing by taking it to a mechanic. Most people don't. But still, by law, he's not required to refund you the money for the car. In this case, verdict is for the defendant. I didn't feel like I had enough time. Um, I didn't want to interrupt your, the, honor, or the judge because I felt that that was rude. I didn't feel like I was given the opportunity to prove my case that it was in fact a fraudulent case. She just wanted me to take the responsibility to fix her, uh, her transmission, knowing fully well that she signed a paper as is, no warranty, and she accused me of selling a lemon to her. I don't think she understand what a lemon law is. If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.